I only hope that we never lose sight of one thing that was all started by a mouse. Hello, everyone out there in podcast land. This is the Beyond the Mouse podcast, the podcast for all things Disney for NPR Illinois Community Voices and for the Front Row Network. I am your host, Craig, and I'm joined today by my co-host, Mr. Brett Rutherford. Hello. And Vanessa Ferguson. Hello. I feel so underdressed looking at Brett. <laughs> I know. Oh yes, well, for well, for our, for our listening audience, yeah, for our listening audience, I am a high, highly branded day because I have my Disney Plus T-shirt on. I have my Disney Plus cap, which I got in um, at D23 Expo, and um, and anyway, I'm calling it my Disney trucker look. <laughs> We really enjoy it, and we really enjoy Disney+, Plus, which is why we are celebrating the birth of a streaming service. It came upon the world in November 12th uh, last year, and so as we sit here just a week after that anniversary, we wanted to reflect back on our thoughts on Disney+, Plus, um, some initial thoughts that we had building up to this, and did they live up to those expectations, Uh, some favorites that we have on Disney+, Plus. also if anything that might have surprised us, as well as things that we might not have liked as much. So we're going to dive into a bunch of stuff today about Disney+, Plus, and uh, we're excited for you to come along with us and talk all things Disney streaming with you. Just excited, just excited stuff. But I will say, as an update to our last week's episode, uh, my son has started l- listening to Super Secret Hive and absolutely loves the show. So he uh, listened to the beginning. He loves the theme song. He already knows the words. He sings along with it. So if you have not checked out Super Secret Hive, make sure you do that, especially if you have kids. Uh, they're, they're really just cranking out some amazing episodes. We had recorded that interview quite a, a bit ago. And so since then, they've actually re- released several other new episodes so you can check them out too uh, definitely just wanted to give them a plug before we dive into this but now let's talk all things disney plus and brett i want you to start this off because you got to see this at d23 you were the first person to have experienced disney plus and then you were so excited of course you're a i believe you're a founding circle member or you're not right <laughs> no, I'm not. There was ample opportunity to become one at uh, at D23 Expo, but I spent my coin elsewhere. <laughs> so, because I knew I would, you know, whatever the price is, I know you're giving me a bargain at this, but just let me pay full price because it's worth it. I know it's going to be worth it. So, yeah. Well, D23 Expo, it was it was like the premier big event um on the show floor um and it was that was fun and then actually the the panel was just amazing oh residual goosebumps so that was great so yeah so the disney plus uh experience at d23 expo was more than i expected it was just so amazing and I do remember like being so excited in that time, uh, that October, November time frame, like gearing up for this. Of course, we recorded our episode, which Vanessa went back and listened to recently, and she'll have some thoughts about that. But, you know, it, it, it just was something that was really exciting that was coming down the pike. And we didn't even know like where we were going to be in this year. Could you imagine if Disney didn't have a streaming service to rely on uh, for some of that uh. entertainment? And um, I mean, this was really just there could not have been better timing to have a Disney streaming service that's easily accessible that everyone can watch while they're sitting at home. Uh, and so it, it all worked out extremely well, certainly. But Vanessa, talk to us a bit about your uh, initial thoughts when it was coming, but also uh, talk to us about that episode we recorded last year. Well, so if you go back and listen a year ago to our Disney Plus episode, um, you may think that uh, I, I didn't know what was really happening. And that would be correct. Because I said that I was very excited about several shows, some of which uh, took a while to come to Disney Plus, and some of which are still not on Disney Plus. So to say I was confused, it would be accurate. Um, there was also a somewhat inappropriate joke about Jeff Goldblum. So I apologize, Mr. Goldblum. I didn't realize how that was sounding as I said it. But anyway, um, yes, there were there were several things that we were very excited about. And uh, what, another theme of mine was when I didn't know what it was going to be about, I made up 
uh, the show myself. So um, like Be Our Chef turned out to be something completely different than what I told you all it would likely be. So um, I am so sorry. So now I am more prepared and can talk about what Disney Plus really is this go around. Absolutely. And I'll tell you what, they needed to hire you as a showrunner for Be Our Chef because we're going to get into our likes and dislikes a little bit. I'm not going to bury the lead there. Be Our Chef is not a great show. Uh, so, and the, the idea yeah. that you had for it was <laughs> phenomenal. For everyone. Yeah, right? It would have been great if they would have just, you know, discussed with me first. How dare Absolutely. they? Absolutely. Had they made, had they made, you know, that um, if, if they just would have listened to you, uh, this show would have been incredible for sure. I absolutely agree with that. Um, but Brett, uh, any other thoughts about the initial launch and oh, where sir, your well, was during that time? Oh, my sir. Well, I so remember, you know, uh, November 12th, 2000. 19 because it was 37 years ago was that it feels <laughs> it was, that way well, yeah anyway yeah uh but i woke up like i think around three o'clock in the morning give it a try let's see if it launches and it did and i actually i had taken the day off from work <laughs> to watch so many things and so it was premiere day and i was so excited i did not wear my t-shirt and my cap but i should have the first thing I watched was Imaginary Story, and I kind of, it was kind of like a Disney Plus smorgasbord the first day. I did a little, little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of new programming, a little bit of classics. Anyway, yeah, so it was great. I watched Sleeping Beauty and Snow White on digital. It was amazing. So amazing. Mm, it's a great day. Ooh, I'll have a birthday party for it. This year, I'll wear the t-shirt. I'll have a cake. We'll get kazoos or those blow things like, you know you had for my birthday, you know, yeah. and uh, yeah, I'm excited. So that's coming I up. I burned all of them. <laughs> all. It's coming up. Yeah, that's right after my birthday. So I consider Disney Plus kind of my own very personal um, birthday present that keeps on giving. I do. Yeah, absolutely. It does just keep on giving and gives us a lot of great content. Uh, I give Be Our Chef maybe a, a little bit of grief, <laughs> but overall, great content coming to the platform. And I want to talk about some of our favorites. And I think that we probably should maybe lead off here with uh, what was marketed as the biggest show to launch on Disney Plus. And that, of course, being The Mandalorian. And so that was the oh, sorry, what? To... What's that? <laughs> What's well, that? You haven't heard of that? What? The man, the um, and that one, <laughs> it was, it was the show that, uh, I, uh, was extremely excited for. It was the first one that I watched. It birthed to the world, baby Yoda, um, who really, by the way, isn't really Yoda. And I mean, I get it like that Star Wars nerd talk. Um, but you know, the, uh, the idea that that live action show, first of all, like a live action Star Wars show, it was not guaranteed to be incredible and amazing. And, uh, John Favreau, obviously found a really cool story. He's set it in a really neat uh, package for us. I think he's followed a lot of tropes that like Westerns would. And so like what made those Westerns great is making the Mandalorian great as well. Um, bringing in all these new characters. Uh, of course, season two just kicked off and we got to see the Tuscan oh, Raiders. No spoilers. Ooh. Some oh. of us haven't seen it yet. Some, some no. of us well, are, are going to... It's okay, like in the trailer just, for the episode. Okay, I'm just saying, don't don't share any spoilers because some some of us are are gonna wait and then binge it all at once. Oh well, that's your fault. Oh, so we can't talk about no, 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 no. You can't talk no. about something and t oh, oh, okay. All I was sorry, say, that was just a little uh, banter behind the that, scenes banter. Uh, this is this is a this is not a spoiler, Vanessa. This story was pretty widely um, spread around the internet that um, the Tuscan Raiders, you do get to, uh, a lot of them in the first episode. And of course, we've only seen them a little bit in Tatooine and um, A New Hope. And so they have like a sign language that they use. And what's really cool about that is that John Favreau actually had hired someone uh, who is hard of hearing or deaf and is um, they developed the sign language sort of based off of ASL, which I think is really neat uh, to have that little like inclusivity as well to bring somebody in to the process and so just like little things like that just really a cool way to do things um and it's been a great story so far 
you know, I, I can't wait to see the next episode. And every week we get one now for a little while, and it's going to be a great way to spend my Friday mornings for sure. But eight any more other- of them? Are there eight more of them? Eight more this season? Anyway, I Something think like that's yeah. a season of eight. Well, along those lines, um, another thing that um, was, yeah, it was a favorite, and it deals with The Mandalorian, was Disney Gallery's uh, Star Wars, The Mandalorian, which is the behind the scenes, and it is a yeah. deep dive, as we like to say, deep dive into creating this whole world and the production and the music, which is um, one, uh, an Emmy, yeah, the music won an Emmy among other special effects and other things won Emmys. So good. I love, I'm a serious behind the scenes lover of all things behind the scenes. So that was amazing. It's one of my favorite things. So since we're on that topic, I thought I'd add that. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, Dave Filoni and John Favreau, right? And bringing in all of these different yeah. directors. You know, you've got Taika Waititi, who's been in not only as a voice actor, but also as a director. Um, this first uh, episode of season two was actually the first one that John Favreau directed as well as wrote. Huh. So uh, that's cool and too. And Bryce Dallas like, Howard. Yeah, yeah. Dallas yeah. Howard. I mean, like so She's many neat directors yeah. um, and cool. that gallery really does look at all of that. And it's a very cool deep dive completely, Brett. I love that that is the kind of content that they're able to produce because they know that as Disney fans, maybe more than even any other brand or like Star Wars fans, that we will eat that up. You know, so mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. there's some great series on other streaming platforms, but they don't necessarily do the deep dives. And some people might say that that's like a little pretentious on Disney's part. I completely disagree. I think that our like that fandom wants that kind of content, uh, and that's why they're delivering it to us. And so that's a great point to bring up there, Brett. My thank you. I love that. Vanessa, talk to me about maybe one of your favorites. Uh, okay, one of my fa- well. I have to talk about the Imagineering story because, uh, first of all, it's an incredible docu-series and just gives you a a really um, lovely, I'll say lovely, in-depth look at the people behind some of these attractions that we love. And um, so many of their stories are just so charming. And uh, it, it's just so crazy to me that we're talking about it a year later. Because um, when we first talked about it, if you go back to that episode a year ago, we uh, Brett says, um, oh, and I, I think that's of Iwerks' granddaughter who made this docu-series. Doesn't that sound just like Brett? I do such a good Brett. Anyway, oh. uh, <laughs> and, and interpretation. Um, okay. So anyway, uh, so it's it's crazy that I'm listening to us say these things and it's like, within this past year we've talked to her we've not only did we get to watch this incredible series on disney plus but we talked to her and another amazing part of that imaginary story is we're watching this and we're seeing people like bob Gurr, who we talked to (laughs) and it gave oh my gosh it gave us such a, a tangible um uh, look at him right so it's it's not just we're reading about him in a book or we read an article online or maybe watch an interview he's done like watching the imaginary story because it's a really um heartfelt look i think at these people and what they've accomplished you you walk away from that docuseries feeling like you know them like you really know them and you know the behind the scenes and and you can feel um all the heart that they put into these these rides and attractions and you and you wouldn't get that necessarily from an, an ABC interview or a good morning America interview or, or anything like that. So how wild is it? That, it is, that, well, to talk, you guys with, feel um, that way? to talk to Bob Gurr about his experience filming that because we had, you know, we were recalling the imaginary story in him and he was telling us about the basketball and all that sort of thing. And then we talked to Leslie Iwerks about talking to him about that. And she was saying, oh, well, it wasn't kind of planned. We just kind of did this and that. And I'm just like going, I am Disney geek freaking out. I'm like, this is the best because they're talking about, you know, how that would, how that happened. And I, I still just just scream inside because it was so cool. 
And it's also the other thing I've used the Imagineering story because I've watched it multiple times just for fun and also for research for the people that we've had a chance to talk to, which is insane in a wonderful way. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's so cool because we've gotten such a great look at who's creating this magic for us. And we've been able to appreciate that even more, I think, over time. Uh, but this certainly gave it a great look. And to think that this started as a uh, potential one like movie, like documentary style movie, and then it expanded into a series. Um, and, you know, I think that that would not have happened if there wasn't a streaming service, if there wasn't a Disney Plus to be able to plop that on, because I don't know who you distribute that to, except for, you know, that you have an audience here that is going to be eating that up and possibly even more, you know, Leslie uh, was uh, unable to tell us, but she has hinted at the fact. And she also said there might be an announcement sometime in the, the not untold future, that there is still, I more think she said, we'll let Disney make that announcement. I think, <laughs> I in, think in, yeah. the, in that way, she's sort of, you can read between yeah. the lines a little bit there. So well, I'm speculating. Just, in case, uh, in case Disney Legal was go, was listening to our podcast and going after her for you know any sort of contract sort of things, she played it safe and was very, very strong in her allowing Disney to make that announcement. Because as yeah. you would expect, for sure, uh, Imagineering story can't can't say enough about that. And if you haven't watched it yet and you're a Disney fan, seriously you need to do that today. So um, that's something else for Drop sure. Everything. <laughs> so I've gotten to go. Vanessa's gotten to go. Brett, you kind of went with gallery, but you know what? I'll, I'll be generous and say you can Thank say you. another favorite here. It is my birthday month. So I get to celebrate a lot. So um, <laughs> let's see. Um, well, you know, anytime I make a list, I, ha I give you like five things. So I'll try not to. Um, Let's see. Um, okay, I'll just say um, uh, titles that begin with H. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> titles that begin with H. I don't think you can do that. Hamilton. Yes, I can. Hamilton and Howard. Mm. So, yeah, both yeah, of those. Yeah, those are great. So, I mean, we get to experience Hamilton, and that was a little bit of a boost for the Disney Plus uh viewership and uh and uh i guess uh subscription uh levels uh boom you stole my so. surprise because to me that was a major surprise um that it came to disney plus because it was set for a theatrical release and of course that theatrical release was not supposed to happen until october of 2021 and then all of a sudden we find ourselves in a much different world a much different situation and I still think that it was probably Lynn. I, and, and I don't know this, it hasn't been reported this way. Um, I am speculating that it was Lynn that said like, people need to see this now. And um, you know, he had already sold the rights to Disney. They had already filmed it back in 2016. So it had already really been edited and it was ready, it was on the shelf. They decided to forego a uh, theatrical release and put it on Disney Plus right about 4th of July. And they really only announced that about a month in advance. Uh, and so it was just like a really cool surprise to me uh, to be able to see that. Yeah, for us theater people who are so starved from all of our summer theater, it was such a relief to be able to watch something that theatrical that was new and fresh and then talk about it with all of our friends. It was, it was such a big thing and I'm super appreciative of them releasing it early over the summer. Now, Howard, we did know about in advance, um, and I was excited from it the moment they announced it, and it really lived up to expectations, didn't it, Brett? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. I think, actually, what I was most impressed, because the topic of his, of his illness and everything is, is not your usual Disney fodder type show. It's very very serious and I think that the tone of the film was extremely loving the actual way it was filmed and that the 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 people who were doing the voiceovers are Disney legends and Disney people that we are very uh, aware of so we didn't need to see their picture so it just sort of highlighted more his story so I just found it inspiring um, you know, very extremely touching and extremely poignant. And, um, you know, when, and then we shortly after that premiered, 
my gosh, we, we're name dropping, but we spoke with we spoke with Jody Benson and to hear her take on that um, because it showed so much of her early career and her working with uh, with Howard Ashman that you know to get her take on that was just um, it it was so special. So yeah, so my H's were Howard and Hamilton. Sorry to get your your surprise, but I'm sure you'll find something else. So. And now it's all part of this anyway. So it's a big old. I had another Disney favorite that love. I think I can morph into a surprise. So I think, I think it's okay. Um, okay. Before we move on to our surprises, any other favorites you want to talk about? Encore. One day. Oh. Uh, I am just was obsessed with that series and I wish they, I'd get some new episodes, but I love, I love that show. It's, just one of my favorites i really love again for us theater people uh it's it's so fun to watch and i i would be um like checking uh, every week is it has a new episode dropped can i watch the new episode yet what and then knowing what show they were doing too is oh, 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 oh they're doing this show they're doing fiddler on the roof um or they're doing annie get your gun you know so it, it was just so fun to talk with all of our theater friends about and it's just i love that series and i wish there were more episodes um but i that was one of my favorites. I hope that's one that kind of sticks around, you know, after all this is done and they can go back to filming because obviously that is um, uh, very impossible to film that particular show right now. But I think in the future, I hope that they come back to that. I think it's a solid idea. And I, I hope that it had enough of a fan base to warrant additional seasons and to see additional episodes because I completely agree with you, Vanessa. I loved that show for sure. Brett's any thought on that? It made me a little nervous. <laughs> I'm like going, I just, you know, it, it's like the, the, it's kind of like when I watch I Love Lucy, they, it sort of makes me anxious. I'm like going, it's funny. It's so good. Oh my gosh. I'm going to, you know, but yeah, I didn't, I haven't watched all of them. So I still have the, the treat of getting to watch that. So I'm very excited about that. But, I, I do but remember I, they put out a casting call asking for um, people to submit for a second season, but I don't know where they were at in that process, I should say, when uh, production had to shut down and all of that. Um, what I will say is that the thing I learned from that show is never challenge the person that had the part initially because you just look bad. Uh, <laughs> or, or, or don't if you, cry if about it. School, yeah. You know, that if your one high school one ever does like, this, um, if you like get a, a chance to be on this show and you think that maybe you're better than the person that got it in high school, just let <sighs> that live in your own head and don't express yeah. that. Let that okay. go. Ship is sailed. <laughs> Absolutely. So let's move on to- um, Oh, I have one more. I have oh, one, Brett yeah, one more. you didn't ask. Uh, one Day at Disney. How can I not mention that? Because it's been it's been like this anthology series that has that's running like the entire year. So um, I've learned so much. And you and the episodes. I think it started off with kind of more of a documentary style or a longer one. But then each week we get to meet someone else who works at Disney, and we've learned so much. And it's so great for again behind the scenes. So sorry if that one was my second one, but I wanted to give that a mention because it was on my list. No, that's okay. I um, it's actually one I've I've not experienced at all. I haven't seen a single episode of it, so uh, it'll be one that I'll have to go back and check out for sure. You'll have to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's move to surprises. And uh, for our surprises, uh, I'll start us off. I I think my surprise hasn't been the Disney content. It hasn't been the Marvel content. It hasn't even been the Star Wars content. My surprise has really been the Nat Geo content because when they first announced this and they said that they had National Geographic involved in it as well, um, I was like, that's cool. It seems like kind of a cool extra to have. But the more and more we watch now, is it's those content like those shows on Nat Geo, like the the Rogue Trip show um, about uh, and uh, blanking on his name, but the the former anchor who is a wartime correspondent who uh, really got injured. Um, he's taking his son now uh, on these trips to different countries and kind of exploring, and you get to see sort of like that investigative journalism piece, but like in like the moment it's really cool like it just it's such a cool experience to have that and then right now they're having um they have a docu series a docu drama series on the right stuff which is really cool and then they're actually doing a full-blown documentary on the actual 
the right stuff, the, the Mercury 7 astronauts that's going to be dropping. Actually, it's the same day that this episode drops. So um, you can watch that right now. And uh, <laughs> I'm excited to see that. So it's like all those cool surprises that Nat Geo has provided to us because of course they already had great content, but then it seems like even more and more they're bringing out additional shows for Disney Plus. And I, I guess it's because we haven't had cable for a while. Um, we've been a cord cutter for almost 10 years now, probably. And so I haven't had like the Nat Geo channel for a long, long time, maybe even before. Like I know it's not that it's pretty recent as a channel. So um, I may have never had the Nat Geo channel. So maybe I'm just catching up on things, but I'm loving that um, because it's just a cool uh, amount of content that you have. Yes, Vanessa? I, I'm just trying not to laugh every time you abbreviate things. I know you abbreviate them in a very normal way, but I feel like you're an abbreviation guy. So I just love that you keep calling it Nat Geo, Nat Geo, Nat Geo. <laughs> I'm and just I'm trying, trying to not go. to laugh. That's not, I'm trying not that's to not, laugh. Yeah, that's that's not just Craig. Um, no, I know. he. These are very normal uh, abbreviations, but anytime <laughs> there's an option for an abbreviation, Craig will go for it. So the same like I'm young the... adult novels. He goes, YA novels, YA novels, <laughs> Geo, you know, it's anytime, the D-A-K, 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 D plus, D plus, anytime there's an option for to save time, with an abbreviation, Craig's there. He's your guy. Here's and I know the, the, here's the truth of the matter. Um, I listen to, I listen back to our shows. Um, some people that do podcasts don't like doing that. I like listening back and, and whatever. Maybe I'm narcissistic. I do listen to us at 1.9 speed because I think my voice drags so much when I'm actually like <laughs> listening to it in like normal speed. I'm just like, oh my goodness. I am the slowest talker ever. And so maybe that's why I'm like trying to, um, you know, make sure that I get my words out there quickly and getting them abbreviated helps that. It's like that. Get lucky for office. you behind the scenes for, you know, for beyond the mouse, lucky audience. So, <laughs> so that's my first surprise. Um, and you can either com oh. comment on national geographic, having some content on Disney plus, or you can pick a different surprise. Uh, I'll throw it to Brett first. Um, well, uh, speaking of things I haven't seen yet, <laughs> it's on my list. Um, and I will do that. If I could only found time, you know, there's so much going on. You know, oh, yeah, I have time. There's no excuse. So I will be watching that. I have the, uh, the right stuff. Um, it certainly looked interesting. And I will. Uh, do you give it a thumbs up? Should I go watch it? Yeah, you know, I think um, some people the critique has been that it, it's awfully self important. Um, and I could see that to a certain extent, but these guys are like national icons, right? I mean, they're the first, the first men that uh, got us into space. And so it's a little self-importance there, I think, is totally fine in my book. So okay. I am enjoying it thoroughly. Okay, so um, Nat Geo is uh, on my uh, to-do list. Well, I, you know. I will say um, there's a lot more monkey content now and the gorilla and ape and my mom anything with a monkey or gorilla orangutan anything primate my mom is there and i'm noticing so i've shared my account and i'm noticing a few things with my nieces and nephews i'm seeing a lot of mickey's clubhouse like continue watching and i'm like i wasn't watching this um <laughs> Louie, but i wasn't watching this and i'm like oh okay cool they're using it um my uh, mom's man friend that I've shared with, he's watching all the Treasure Island, Swiss Family Robinson, and, and, and all the, the good classic stuff. And then I'm noticing a lot of monkey stuff that's like, continue watching these monkeys, continue watching a Gino the Gorilla at Animal Kingdom. I mean, that was seriously, I watched that this morning. I'm like, I wasn't watching this. Oh, Karen, right. <laughs> so that has been a nice surprise. And, and, and in line with your national, your Nat Geo, because uh, I believe there is a Nat Geo monkeys episode as well. I'm so sure there's, I, there's a lot of primate content. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm very, the, the Ferguson household mom is very pleased with the, the monkey content. That's great. Do you, have <laughs> a, do you have a surprise you want to mention beyond um, just the uh, gorilla-ish yeah. amount of monkey I, content? I have one that is a recent surprise. Our good friend to the podcast, Erica, 
she texted us and let us know that there's a new Olaf short uh, called Once Upon a Snowman. And I was so excited because when, um, was it before Moana maybe? That there was a um, Frozen uh, short and people were having a cow about it. They were so upset that there was this long, long for a short, short uh, about Frozen again. And I was delighted because I loved Frozen. And I'm like, yeah, short, sure, this is great. But people were so upset. So then I thought, well, shoot, now we're never going to have another short again because people ruin it. This is why we don't have nice things. And then lo and behold, there's a new Once Upon a Snowman. And you guys, it is so cute and funny. It is so good. Yes. Josh Gad, yeah, you know, it's, it's, you know, I like to tell Brett, okay, we can't make the same joke too many times, but Josh Gad's voice, he can just make any joke as that darn snowman any infinitely. And it's still going to be funny to me. So if you haven't watched it, um, I would suggest watching that one. That was a surprise to me and I was delighted. And it's like a different perspective, right? I mean, it's yeah. kind of cool that it, yes. you, know, you get that. You get that behind extra, the little scenes. addition to the story. Yeah, like a yeah, little behind yeah. the scenes, exactly. Literally, yeah. this is what was happening when that was happening. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, it's so, so good. funny. So For good. sure. Yeah. I really uh, I really enjoyed that too. Brett, a uh, surprise that you had. Okay. Um, to continue on with my, um, I have more than one um, that you have not mentioned yet, because I guess we're moving on to the next topic after this. So I have to include Noel, which it's time to watch that again, because that was uh, a holiday offering from last year. Enjoyed it to totally. So it was, it was good. And we got to see the costumes at D23 Expo. 2019. It was very cool. A first day surprise when I first watched it. I watched an episode of The World According to Jeff Goldblum. Oh my gosh. And I did some research just to make sure there is there is a season two, which oh, I can't oh, wait to see. Doesn't there is a season about two. A release date or this it? No, it didn't. It did not. They said that, well, um, I think the article that I read uh, was early so it was 2019 like January I'm sorry 2020 January and so they were working on it then so maybe you know maybe they were able to social distance Jeff Goldblum he just needs to talk about anything and because I'm like going I found it extremely therapeutic and yeah. his take on things is so specific yet just amazing and it's just you know life lessons by watching jeff goldblum talk about tennis shoes and yeah. rvs jeans. and barbecues and jeans the gene episode was amazing yeah. yeah so we can't wait for the next one and then I, since i have to throw it in disney prop culture was oh, another yeah. surprise behind the scenes again about um, that. Have, so you, good. have you heard i like that behind the scenes so yeah good so good so you got to see you know there was kind of like this well you got to go to the uh the archives again hello on my to-do list please anyone i have white gloves you've heard um so i mean it was mary poppins and then and he's then taking these treasures to the people that were in these in these movies you know and then it was uh who framed roger rabbit and tron Oh, so good. So that was another big, you know, again, do we have season two of Disney prop culture? Thank you. Whenever all of this madness is done, I'm ready for more of all of that. So, you know. yeah, I completely agree with you there. Um, Vanessa, surprise, any other surprises you wanted to mention? Uh, well, I'm just surprised that some of the episodes and shows that I was excited about in our first um podcast about this still have not appeared on disney plus uh where i'm still waiting for ink and paint the uh i don't think that's on there yet i did a search and it wasn't of the that is the women who were in the beginning uh helping with the animation still waiting to hear about those gals and uh <laughs> waiting on behind the attraction with Dwayne the Rock Johnson and make my mom very very happy to see him she's got she's oh. a big big fan and um yeah so I'm still waiting for those shows any day now Disney plus kind of got nothing else to do we're in a quarantine <laughs> pandemic situation 
that, that's all right. Take your time. And in case you're fairly new to the podcast, we gave uh, Vanessa an ample amount, and me in particular, an ample amount of grief in the fact that we were talking about launch day titles to Disney Plus, and none of Vanessa's that. shows were launch day titles. I didn't anyway. realize that we were talking about launch day, I think. I think we were just talking about, because I, in my head, I heard new shows coming to Disney+. Coming to, Plus. honestly, you know, not That's to gang up or, you know, uh, not to defend Vanessa here, but it oh, was yeah, titles we coming to. Oh, yeah, wouldn't want to do that. Too. I'm trying to do it in a nice way, Vanessa. Uh, anyway, because okay. I'm like, because, yeah, because we all need to um, have lovely banter. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you're both right. Girls, girls, you're both pretty. Anyway, so. <laughs> Brett, did you have any other surprises you wanted to mention? Oh, I thought I thought we were just going around once, so I gave you both of mine. So Disney Prop, oh, okay. well, Newell, and then The World According to Jeff Goldblum, I, and Disney Prop Culture. I, I do have one Props. other thing. Have you guys watched the Earth to Ned at all show? Mm-hmm. And I did mention this in our first podcast because I didn't know what it was, but I knew it was Muppets and it's alien Muppets. Oh, and right. it's basically yeah. one alien is interviewing celebrities. Um, and I, it reminds me of Brett a lot because. <laughs> <laughs> the truth be told, I am an alien. <laughs> Alien's oh like, God. he's trying to understand how to be a talk show host. And he's like, this is banter. We're bantering now. See how funny this is, this banter? And I laughed so hard. And it's just so funny that you just mentioned banter again, Brett. You are that alien. So it's an okay show. It's kind of funny. Uh, but if you just want to look at it through the lens of, could this be Brett? Then it makes it even more hilarious. So check okay. that one out yes. too. I am, sh- sh- you know, I am in fact an alien. That would explain a lot, honestly. <laughs> So I'm like going, see, self-discovery, yeah. So. <laughs> As we move along into our likes and not so much likes, uh, Brett, I, 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 you uh, helped establish this topic. So I wanted to let you define uh, your likes and maybe not so much likes first. And then that way we can see uh, where we ought to take this. Oh, well, yeah, well, um, I did have uh, Vanessa in mind with the not so much likes, and she has kind of alluded, just mentioned it ever so slightly, um, that Be Our Chef was not exactly what she was looking for, you know, and so that's kind of what, but and also I'm like going likes and dislikes, you know, as a fan of pretty much all things Disney. I did want to kind of paint a lovelier or slightly rosier picture of the not, so I called it not so likes. You know what I'm saying here? Just kind of not so likes. Not a dismissal, not a very hard critique. Called it. (laughs) We could do that. But since we're talking about Disney Plus and we love all things Disney, that's why I call it not so much likes. Okay. So you get it? Totally. And likes are things you like. Totally. So likes and not so likes. So so my mm, be our chef. I did want I watched one episode. I'm like going, Vanessa's show is so much better. So I, you know, so anyway. yeah. Um, but um again from another like, you're really seeing a pattern here because it was Disney Insider. So it was behind the scenes of more Disney content and it was like that one was really much like across the board it was kind of whenever the a new uh program or like the mulan was episode or mulan the mulan movie was coming out and we were waiting for that premiere uh that was on the disney insider and it's just you know again you know let me go back for just a moment Years ago, as a D23 member, I received an extremely lengthy and extremely detailed survey. And I would say it was like four years ago, easily. And it was, you could tell that they were looking to at least offer more content to the Disney loving public. And it was I mean, it was, you know, it was pages and pages, but it was, it was so long and so detailed. I'm like going, they've got to be serious about this. 
So, you know, that's a little bit behind the scenes and I'll fit that in somewhere here in uh, this presentation. Um, but yeah, so that was kind of, that was really interesting. But yeah, my likes, Disney Insider and everything I've ever watched. Perhaps this is the time. Except for Be Our Chef. This, Sorry. Uh, to, to quote our friend Lou, uh, this is the time, well, and an attraction. Uh, this is the best time to mention that on next week's episode, we will be speaking to Kevin Rafferty, who is an Imagineer and has designed much of what we uh, have come to love in the more modern day parks. And he was on an episode of Disney Insider, walking everybody right through uh, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. So um, definitely something that I would suggest checking out uh, before you even listen to our episode next week, because it'll get you kind of excited for a new attraction that had launched at Disney World uh, and is coming to Disneyland and then whatever future uh, Disneyland has. And then um, we will talk to Kevin all about that and, and all the development as well. We're excited about that conversation for sure. So I would say my like, because when I, when I was thinking about this in my head, um, I kind of went the way that Vanessa did. And I thought, Brett just doesn't want to say things we didn't like. So he's, he's trying to balance out the force here. Um, but my like, which would be kind of a sub-level underneath my favorites, right, to me, my like is a lot of the children's content. Um, and kind of as the, the representative parent on this podcast, uh, I will say that it's really cool to have so many of those shows um, tour uh, my son to watch we just started watching and it's amazing that he loves this show there's a new rocketeer show where uh the rocketeer's granddaughter kit secord is the new rocketeer and she's like a seven-year-old and, and just like it just like hits every note for him and it's not original to disney plus it was on the disney channel last year but the fact that it's on disney plus makes it a lot more accessible for us to watch um also you know i, I you mentioned vanessa and we haven't checked it out yet that bluey show um yes it's so good we're talking about the other day start with grannies that's a great episode Okay. So I will. Good. And Risha. you know, so just like just so much content uh, for the kiddos that are out there. So I wanted to throw that out there definitely as a like. And to go back to my Nat Geo surprise, there's also um, like Bigger, Weirder, Stranger or something like that. It's, it, I can't remember the title exactly, but it's, uh, it's a National Geographic show all for kids. And they did like Pirate's Treasure and they did um, tornadoes, like just these cool topics that, uh, he's really into as well. So I wanted to mention that as my like. Vanessa, do you want to mention a like? And then I'll uh, also go to you for your not so like. Oh, okay. Uh, well, or my- Or do you want to just do not so like? That's what I was preparing myself for, but that's okay. Totally I can fine. throw in a like. Um, well, I really like, there's a bunch of these little indie films that appeared on Disney plus everyone had watched them, but I hadn't gotten caught up yet. So it was nice to watch. Um, they're like superheroes in it. And there was like this bad guy named Thanos. And, um, there's like the guy's wearing iron all the time. It's like a fashion statement and, um, this really green guy. So it was nice to see those little series of indie films. It turned out to be really good. So that was a like. Don't know if I'll watch them again, but it was really cool. Um, my dislike, there there were some uh, series that I what don't know. Well, I'm sorry, what did were. you call it again? Sorry, it was a not so like. Mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead. Not, sorry to interrupt. Oh, not so like, sorry. My not so like was that there are some series that I can't tell if they're just not made for me or if they were filler content. Um, for example, um, uh, Pixar in real life, it's like a mix between P Pixar and Candid Camera, but it's not that funny. It's like, I don't know. I, it, it, it was kind of cool to see the Pixar ideas that they came up with. To me, it was just like, oh, look, we did something that they didn't realize what was happening and this is their reaction. And it's, it's every shot. So I, it's, it's, I was just, I, I kind of lost interest, but then I thought, well, maybe this isn't for me. Maybe this is for kids or, or family. Uh, so that's why it's only not so like, I, I did like the props that they came up with. That was really cool, but that's an example of something. I, I can feel Brett 
wanting to dig daggers into me for saying anything. Uh, no, anything actually, bad, I, I kind of watched that, that too, out. and I'm like going, oh, I don't know. So, yeah, and oh, okay, cool. so there, there's going to be know. some content that's just not for us. I, I completely agree with that one in particular, Vanessa. There's some like cute ideas there, but yeah, even though they're short, they're too long. Does that yes, make sense? That's, <laughs> yes, that's what I thought. Long. I'm like, gosh, when is this going to end? It's the same <laughs> it's thing the over and over again. It's the longest 11 minutes of your life. Kind of yes, yeah. that's how I felt. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, here's my not so like, and this might get me raked across the coals from uh, Mr. Rutherford. Uh, <laughs> what, you me, think I'm judgy or something? Anyway, to me, sorry. it is the to me it is the content release schedule that I am not a huge fan of, and I understand that they are one company trying to provide us with all this different content, but. Um, Anna and I were talking about it the other night and she goes, you know, there hasn't really been anything new on Disney plus for a while now. And that's true. And now granted, I will stipulate that we are going through a global pandemic and that production had to shut down on a lot of shows. Understand that. But even like new properties, like Vanessa mentioned, they announced all these shows. We haven't gotten like a new announcement of a show or something like tangible to like latch onto in a long time. And we are going into, um, you know, we're going to have uh, a bunch of Marvel content that does keep getting pushed down, pushed down the, the pike. And that's because of the pandemic. I get that. But like, I don't know, just something new would be cool. And so uh, when you look at the list of like, so all these streaming platforms, generally, uh, people will provide lists like, what's on Netflix this month? What's on Amazon this month? And it's like, what's new on Disney plus this month? And there's like five titles, you know? Oh, I don't know. Quality <laughs> programming. Wait, wait, wait. If Let's you, look at the Netflix list. I'm like going, no, no, no. If you've ever no, wanted a visual no. representation of what ri rising blood pressure looks like, <laughs> just watch Brett those last 30 seconds. <laughs> He's dying on the inside with all your comments. Oh, right? so it's just like going, no, you, you're, you're perfect. I do not. I certainly would not want to, even though I could, devalue everything you had to say. Um, I'm just going to let that go. I'm going to let that, it go. That's, that's lessons awesome. learned. I, I don't really have any like major gripes on any of the show. I I did watch Be Our Chef, and I know we're we're. Um, we're kind of hounding on it. It, yeah, it is okay. not a good show. So I don't know who decided <laughs> that that was the, what they were going to do. With when that show, when you have I these like chefs, like when, when you had Vanessa's idea and access to these wonderful chefs and certainly an audience who wants to learn how to cook. And in fact, you know, they, during our current um, pandemic times online, you get kind of recipes and all this sort of stuff, but they should have been thinking ahead on that one. Yeah, Vanessa, sure. you need I mean, to take over that show. Join the Disney mm -hmm. creative team. I know. I, that's I've been oh. tweeting them, texting them, emailing, being pretty persistent, and I'm still <laughs> getting a no. <laughs> Who would have thought? But let's, uh, unless Brett, do you have anything that is a not so much like that you wanted to mention? Why no? <laughs> <laughs> Of course not. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm a positive person and I live in a wonderful, wonderful, positive world. And Moving things right that I find that are not so much likes, I, I disregard and ignore. I certainly wouldn't go on and on about them. <laughs> I'm sorry, that one was fun. That one was for me. Ooh. Hello, sorry. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Banter, Let's, banter. Oof. We will. Uh, it. Is we'll, it the evil queen or Brett joining us today? I don't know. That was that one stung. We should cut Only, in the clip of Brett I, just disparaging Netflix uh, <laughs> right here again. I'm um, like going. Did you? Well, I'm like going. Yeah. Oh, sorry, it's all good. Pricing. Let's talk pricing uh, because that is something that we talked about last year, and um, I do think so. Here's where maybe my not so like makes sense. Okay. So when you're looking at streaming platforms, this is still absolutely the best deal in streaming. Um, you have Netflix that 
ranges anywhere from $12.99 a month uh, or up to $15.99 a month if you want the 4K content. Um, you have Amazon Prime, which of course you spend, uh, I think Amazon Prime membership now is $129 a year. So technically you're getting the free shipping and stuff. So it's hard to judge that one. Um, Hulu starts anywhere from like the five to six dollar range on up to thirteen dollars if you don't want the commercial content. Um, Peacock technically is free at the moment, but they are going to, uh, I think, switch to a paid model uh, of around twelve dollars in the not too distant future. And then HBO Max launched this year at fifteen ninety nine um, a month. So, all that being said, six ninety nine a month for all of this content is incredible. And so maybe the fact that um, they might not have, again, sorry, Brett, they might not have as much content being added to their platform monthly as some of the others. You are still getting this at just a ridiculous price. And I should mention that I did do the founder circle because I knew that I would want to have this content and I knew and they got me from day one. Um, I'm actually going to be really interested to see what they do for us founder circles members in November of 2023. Like if we're allowed to like kind of up that contract again or, or what we're going to be able to do at that point. They still have some time to figure that out. Um, but I basically pay, I think it's $4 and 13 cents a month because what they did was they gave you a discounted price, but then they also gave you a year free. So I paid for essentially three years of service um, before it launched. So like in October of 2019, um, I spent probably about $140 uh, and they, they charged that right away. And now I haven't paid for Disney Plus again, and I won't until after November of 2023. So uh, what was I thinking? What was I thinking, honestly? And I could have gotten a pin. Oh, well, lessons learned. Yeah, I mean, truly, like, not, not, to, not to agree with you, but what were you thinking? Not to agree with you. I mean, what were you thinking? And I'm like going, I was sleep deprived because I was working very hard to create content for my friends beyond the mouse and everywhere else. And absolutely, that is the case. Um, I will say that I was not at D23 and that I signed up for it after D23. So it was available uh, after that as yeah, well. Um, but no, it truly, uh, any way you're paying for it. There's also the bundle deal that I am not doing, obviously. Um, but that includes Hulu and ESPN Plus as well. And I think that that's $12.99 a month. Am I right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah. What are you going to say, Brett? No, I was just saying that I did the Hulu. Oh, you did the Hulu and, bundle? you know, my ESPN, you know, I'm watching that all the time because yeah. I want to find out brackets. about baskets. Oh, baskets. baskets. Brackets. Your favorite, your favorite. I learned so much. Plus is March Madness, right? With all the brackets and everything. <laughs> brackets. Yeah. That's like, yeah. Yes. Vanessa, I love that. Your thoughts. First of all, how do you pay? I know you said that you're sharing it amongst family, which I, I don't know, like Disney has said that you can share it with other people. And I don't know if it's supposed to be within your household or not. I don't know if you're breaking the rules, but I know that they have said that you can share your account, but um, how do you pay? Do you pay monthly? I did the founder circle. I am in the oh circle. Oh my gosh. Brett, get You're out of here. The circle of life. <laughs> because, because I feel like such a Disney slacker. Fans on this podcast and Brett's just not one of them. <laughs> no, but I got peer pressured because I assumed that if I didn't, you all would be watching things and talking about it without me. So I, that's why I signed up and uh, yeah, that's how I, that's how I do it. And I just how gave my login information to a couple family members and uh, you know, and they should not be on me about that because I paid for Mulan and as a single person and I shared it with my friends and family and I was like I I will cover the bill on Mulan so you all can enjoy uh but I don't know that they ever watched it so you know it was basically me but I think Naomi. overall I I mean I don't know how you could complain about the price of this uh you know I really don't I think that um it hit the mark uh, and I think it was a, a great spot for the consumer. They gave some options for those like kind of Uber fans to get excited about their product. And that helped them because now they're definitely outpacing their projections. Now, granted, again, they probably didn't assume that we were all going to be sitting at home all the time, but they, they have uh, the last quarterly earnings um, 
I remember the, I, the, the last one I remember was from the Hamilton drop and they said that they had 55 million subscribers. Um, I'm sure that that has gone up since then, uh, certainly for some of the content that they've brought out and things like that. So, uh, but, but yeah, so about 55 million subscribers back in July and that was before it was even a year old. Uh, so that, that's great. Like that's, that's a, a healthy chunk of people that you're having pay for this. Uh, and certainly the pricing helps that. And as a parent, thank you uh, for the content, for sure. Any other thoughts on pricing? It's a bargain. I would All do right. it again. Full price, pay full retail for this because now quality we'll programming is worth it. <laughs> now we get to Armchair, Imagineer, uh, Creative Direct, our wants and needs for Disney Plus. What are we wanting to see on Disney Plus? Uh, what content do we want to see? I will mention before I say this, the thing I'm dying to see, and we are finally getting one of them by the end of the year, we are getting WandaVision. I'm so excited to watch WandaVision. Um, I was excited to see Captain America, or well, I should say, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, even though, spoiler alert to the biggest movie ever made, that now Sam Wilson is Captain America, so it should be Captain America and the Winter Soldier, but I understand that that might confuse people. It's totally fine. I get it. But uh, I was excited to see that in the fall. Uh, I'm thinking that it must have some tie into the Black Widow movie, which is why they're now moving that to next year. Also, I know it shoots in Prague and the Czech Republic has been kind of shut down, obviously. Um, they're going through another COVID spike at the moment. So, um, but you know, WandaVision, I'm really excited for, um, but I, that's content that's already been announced. So I think that this is the, the thought of this topic is more, uh, we want to think about things that we haven't had announced yet and what we'd want to see. So I'll let Brett start us off. Well, again, as I mentioned this survey that I took a number of years ago, uh, the things that I included were um, that I would love to see a uh, wonderful world of Disney, which used to be on the Disney channel, Vault Disney. It was on at night. And I, what, hello, hello, if you're listening. Hello, hello, lovely and wonderful Disney people. You have created multiple generations of viewers for your product and nostalgia, and we have time to watch this right now, and we also give you the money for the nostalgia. We would like to see the programs of our youth, our parents' youth, our you know people that we know's youth, because you have 60 years of wonderful world of Disney and various incarnations of uh, some of it is on, some of it, some obscure stuff, but I want the wonderful world of Disney, AKA Vault Disney, which had wonderful programming, like the anniversary specials. I'm gonna go into that. Do you want my whole list now, or do you? are we going to um, basket or round robin this? Whatever you'd like to do. <laughs> it is my month. Sorry, it's not really my month, but you know, it's still my birthday month. I like to celebrate. Um, I'm not gonna do all of them, but I will say my first one is wonderful world of Disney content, the movies, um, you don't have to, well, okay. On behalf of our uh, friend to the podcast, Paul, um, the scarecrow of Romney Marsh. <laughs> I know there's a big following for that too. I cannot watch that because that would scare me to death. But anyway, so that's for our, that's for our friend of the podcast, Paul. The Scarecrow of Romney Marsh. I bought it on eBay for him um, uh, uh, on VHS and gave it to him. I'm like, oh, this scared me, but here, you enjoy that. Mine is Wonderful World of Disney, a.k.a. Vault Disney from the Disney Channel. That's my first one. Next. Wonderful, wonderful. And I I, I couldn't agree more with you. Um, like the the content that they have there and give us all of the, give us all of that, like Disneyland in color and like all those episodes of Walt, you know, they have those, give them to us because like, it would be so cool to watch all of those. And like you said, the Walt Disney stuff that they used to do in partnership and maybe still do with TCM. Again, I've been a cable cutter for so long. I don't know, but, um, but those, that's the kind of content that we would eat up with a spoon. So why not drop some of that um, for sure? Completely agree with you there. Vanessa, Thank you. what do you want to see on Disney plus? Well, I don't know why I should continue to give out my good ideas when they don't take my <laughs> advice, but um, I will suggest that uh, they give us a series on attractions that once were 
Um, that is a big thing on YouTube. A lot of uh, YouTubers, uh, vloggers, they do deep dives into past attractions showing old footage and, and the history on them. And that would be really cool um, just to see some of those rides that you remember as a kid, but you obviously can't see anymore. Um, so there's one I'd like to see. I'd, I'd love to have a little bit more of a deep dive into the alien encounter one because woo, that scared me as a kid. Oh, so <laughs> I'd good. just love to know, uh, know more about that one I, um, since it was so frightening to me. <laughs> I, I should say mine um, is, so again, they've announced so much that's coming. So it's hard for me to be like, I want more Marvel shows because we just haven't gotten them yet, right? Like they've already announced like She-Hulk and Miss Marvel and stuff. So mine's a little bit more. And again, this, this is deep dive park stuff. Um, here's what I want because there's nothing I like more on like having something on in the background when I'm working on something or whatever than the Disney park music. And there's a lot of third party places that do that like Sorcerer Radio, uh, D Radio. I love all those. But something like more official from Disney doing that would be cool. One, uh, two, I really enjoy the vlogger videos where it's just like, I think the, the Diz guys do this. It's like a Sunday stroll through the park and they just literally walk through the park and you kind of get the ambiance and everything. Um, something like Disney quality of that would be cool, you know, like to, to have those like walkthroughs for people that are like thinking about planning their vacations and things like that. And then here's my um, probably not possible pie in the sky idea, live webcam to Walt Disney World, Disneyland, Disney Tokyo Sea, uh, Disneyland Shanghai, like uh, Shanghai Disneyland, all of the parks across the world have like on the castle uh, or something somewhere that's not intrusive, uh, have a live webcam uh, that you could log into at any time and see what's up with the park. I think that would be a really neat uh, thing for us. So those are my ideas, again, and mainly because they've already gotten so many good ideas that are in the pipeline. It's hard for me to be like, I want, I want more better, you know, because they <laughs> do a lot of really cool stuff um, coming down the pike here in the next couple of years. Brett, another one for you? Yeah, well, um, are we doing a are we doing another um, basket or another round? Or that's the only one I had. So you just can okay. go for it. Okay, I'll give you my little uh, bouquet of <laughs> things I'd like to see. Well, as we've mentioned in a previous podcast, maybe um, Tower of Terror, so we can have easy access on that program and and allow everyone to watch it because maybe not everyone has a wonderful friend who will buy them a copy. <laughs> <laughs> and um, let's see, uh, North Avenue Irregulars, again, some of these 70s comedies, there are 60s and 70s comedies that, um, you know, when you go in, when you're looking at the search and you can go by decade, it's a great way to search and it's a great way to check out things that you haven't seen. We do have, there are just a number of, uh, of those types of movies, the comedies that, that now maybe you, if they have Snowball Express, they need to have the North Avenue or regulars, hello. But anyway, um, so that, so those types of comedies that as an adult person, if you're watching them, um, you know, and you're remembering them being, oh, so funny as a child, now you kind of go, well, <laughs> but it's still charming and fun. And generally, you're going to love them again. I would like to see a Disneyland 65th anniversary special, like they used to have big specials. And like the 25th is amazing. Um, the 25th, the 25th, the 30th, which I was there for. I was there part of that filming. Hello? Yeah. I mean, I was on Main Street. Anyway. Uh, and then let's see. So there was the 10th anniversary special, which there was the 10th anniversary, there was the 25th, there was the 30th. So anyway, all of those. And we have a big one coming up at Walt Disney World, the big 5-0, uh-huh. So, you know, let's have that. I think it was kind of, it was much more in the Michael Eisner years to the whole synergy thing, which, well, there was a lot of synergy. Um, yeah, so um, it after a while it became slightly derivative. But anyway, uh, but an anniversary special during the Bob Iger years, uh, there wasn't so much that because maybe he was camera shy or he didn't want to be the new Uncle Walt or he didn't want to follow in the 
absolute footsteps of Michael Eisner. But who knows? I've read his book. He didn't mention anything about that. But anyway, big Walt Disney World 50th anniversary special. Put the Christmas specials on, you know, the Christmas Day specials. You know, just have them there oh. available again, you know, so you that could watch that. Nice. The, you know, the yeah. So, or anyway, just pack that content in for us to go in and enjoy like Walt Disney back to my first one. Okay. But the anniversary yeah, specials, I, I want to see them all. I created my own this year. I watched the, I watched the Disney on Disneyland's 65th anniversary. I watched the 10th anniversary special. Then I had to jump over to YouTube to see the 25th anniversary and the 30th and yeah, those. So I want to see big specials. This would not happen because I think that, um, at least within the fan community, we're hoping that this man ascends to the top job uh, at some point in the near future. And I'm sure the person in the current job would not want to promote that idea. But wouldn't it be cool, like just looking at Josh Tomorrow's um, like Instagram, like it, he's so like involved in the parks. He's now taken over parks. Wouldn't it be cool if he had like a, a show where he hosted about the attractions and about the parks and like kind of like to combine your idea, Brett, and my idea, because um, there are times where we can come to some kind of level of agreement, right? And, Absolutely. <laughs> and no, I think I just think it would be really cool. I think that'd be a really neat idea. But again, come I don't know the level of Shapik, agreement. Who yeah. uh, uh, the inner politics uh, in the Disney company might prevent something like that from happening? Is all I'm saying. Um, any other ones that you wanted to mention, Vanessa? No, not until I receive my paycheck uh, for my other genius ideas that um, they're refusing to air. So no, I'm leaving it at that. Fair enough, fair enough. Well, this year we got to see the birth of Disney Plus and now Disney Plus is crawling along and, and soon we'll be up on its own two feet and running and eating solid foods and it's just it's just it's such a, a, it'll it's leave just, us oh it's just like yesterday they were baby programming oh, oh it grows we up used so to fast say, well disney plus has been around for six months and now we're gonna have to start saying it's been around for a year and a year and a half and we can't just say well disney plus has been around for 60 months you know it's it's a it's a it's a strange transition as a parent but we are um we're here for you and uh, we just are excited that we get to share this yes. anniversary with you. Um, Make good choices, Disney Plus. Make good choices. <laughs> Vanessa, I'll give you- And have fun. Vanessa, I'll let you say your wrap up final thoughts and then we will end the episode where we began with Mr. Rutherford uh, and his final thoughts. So Vanessa, your thoughts. Uh, my wrap up final thoughts are, I have loved Disney Plus. I am- been surprised that some of the things that I thought were going to be released were not and I still look forward to those uh episodes shows being released in the future I'm sure they will be wonderful whenever that is could be five years ten years from now who knows maybe never I don't know they got our money regardless right yeah yeah <laughs> Brett <sighs> um <laughs> So many thoughts come to mind, and yet, anyway, no, it's been, it's it's been more than I even thought it could be, which is, I, I had pretty high expectations for this thing, you know, so I enjoy watching so much, and, you know, and I have a comfort level just knowing that something is there, that um, I guess that there are things that go away, kind of in a sort of, uh, that it might be cyclical or taken away and then brought back and all this, but please keep everything there just by a bigger server or whatever it is and provide that content for us because I do I have a comfort level knowing that hmm I'm feeling kind of Avengers today or something Marvel you know or maybe some Star Wars I did watch the much maligned uh Star Wars movie again, the last one, whatever it was. I guess, I don't know the title, so we'll just call it Nine, the much maligned. I watched it again and I'm like going, it did it for me, so lighten up. But anyway, those are my thoughts. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you have Star Wars and you have Disney and you have so many beloved shows. You can go back and watch and the quality of everything is so amazing. 
I love Disney Plus. <laughs> we didn't mention that much uh, throughout this episode that those classics are so well restored as well. So certainly uh, keep watching those uh, that content on Disney Plus. I will pull pull in one plug. Um, George Lucas probably hates the idea that the Star Wars Christmas special is coming as a Lego. Uh, animation special that also drops this week uh that this is being released so definitely check that out as well because it's just so funny that like you're taking something that has been you're talking about much maligned brett like the star wars christmas special lives in infamy uh amongst fans and it's very like you can't find it except for on youtube uh and so i think it's just kind of great that they're kind of leaning into that um even if maybe George isn't pumped about that. He sold the company. It's totally fine. He sold the company. He cashed that check, baby. Mm -hmm. he, and it was good money, right? So um, but thank you for following along with us. And uh, on our anniversary birthday tour of Disney Plus, uh, we love that content and we love to keep getting that and, and to continue to um, watch that content. And thank you for listening to our content or watching on our YouTube page or on our Facebook page. You can uh, always find us on social media at Beyond the Mouse Podcast uh, on Facebook, also Beyond the Mouse Pod on Instagram. You can find us, of course, and subscribe to us on any podcast platform that you'd like to listen to make sure to also give us a rating and leave a review for us that really helps us jump up in the algorithms and uh, be seen by even more people we have some amazing content coming your way. We are, of course, part of the nprillinois.org community voices. You can find us on that page. And then you can also find us as part of the Front Row Network as well. Just so many cool things coming your way for the month of December and to end out uh, our November with you. And as I mentioned earlier, our interview next week with Kevin Rafferty, Imagineer, who has really, it's going to be incredible when you listen to this. Uh, he wrote a book which I cannot recommend enough. And we will talk about it next week. It's called My Magic Journey. Uh, and it's about his Imagineer career. But he has impacted and touched nearly every attraction you can think of in the modern day theme parks. And so I am so excited to get to talk to him and can't wait to bring that to you next week. Um, but that's it for us this week. Go watch Disney Plus already. For Beyond the Mouse, I am Craig. I'm Vanessa. And I'm Brett. And we will see you real soon on the couch, in your house, watching Disney Plus. Don't worry, we're not coming to your house. Uh, we, we will be on our own couches. Maybe we could use group watch. I don't know. We didn't talk about that at all. Anyway. <laughs>